Hi everyone, I'm Paul with Madcap Software. We are up to video nine out of 10 in our learning and development video series. So we have gone through the first four of the five just basic steps that you go through in creating and developing a Flare project. Uh, created the project, added content number two, number three, design number four, develop the targets. Now we're up to the last one. That's building and viewing and publishing the output, getting it into the hands of the people that need to see it. So uh, what we're going to do is we're gonna start out by looking at building the output, generating it. And you've already seen me do that a few times in this series, but I'm gonna talk just a little bit more about that. And what we're doing at this point is we're gonna build it, but we're also going to, we're gonna take a look at the output and both the online output and the PDF outputs that we have in this project. And we're just gonna look through them and see, is there anything that we missed? Is there anything that we need to fix? It's just one of those parts of the process that you go through. And then once we're done and we're satisfied with it, then we start thinking, okay, now where do we, where do we put the output files so that people can get to them? All right, so let's get started by taking a look at building and viewing the output. So let's hop into our Flare project and start building some output. Now, up until this moment, the way that I've always built the output is I uh, would open up one of the targets uh, like this, and then there's the build button right there on that target. And so that's a nice way to do that. Now, I do wanna let you know about a few other options that you have. Notice, first of all, that this target has the word primary next to it. And all that means is that there are a couple of places in the Flare user interface where this one just gets special treatment. You can more quickly build it and view it. And I'm talking about the project ribbon. So if you come here, this could be an even quicker way to build your output. If you don't have the target open, you don't want to go grab it and open it. If you click the face of this button, that is going to build your primary target. If you click the face of the view button, that's going to uh, open it, open up the output if you have it, if you've generated output and then publish, same thing with publishing, which we'll get to uh, in another section here in this video. You can also click the uh, drop down and select a specific uh, target to build or view or publish. So that's another nice quick way. Now in my project, I've got tons of, I got tons of targets. So the, the list goes on and on. And so sometimes I'll use that, but if I know that the uh, target is way down on the list, sometimes I will go to the target itself. So that's the other way you can open up the target, click build there. You can also right click on these and you know build, view, publish a target. Uh, from there. Okay, so those are a few, uh, those are the most common ways to do it. Uh, there are some other options. Number one is if you decide to get Madcap Central in addition to Flare. So Central is this uh, online platform, this other product. It's an on online platform and you can do a lot of things in this um, up there in the cloud. So you can um, you can upload your projects up there and you can build output from Central and you can let Central host your output. And one of the cool things about building from <clears throat> Central is you can actually schedule things. So maybe you just want to regularly build your output and so you can schedule it to do it. And it's very, very simple. So if you're interested in that and other things I talk about having to do with Central, I would suggest that you just uh, go check out the Central Online Help. You can find information about it on our website. You can, uh, if you go onto the Madcap Software website where the videos are, there's Central videos, so you can check those out as well. Uh, let me show you that. This is the Madcap software website and you click resources, you go to videos and tutorials, 
and on the right, MADCAP Central videos. And so you can watch any of those if you're interested in exploring MADCAP Central uh, or anything else. But it is really cool. It's a, just another option that you have. And another option beyond that is command line compilation. And I'm not going to go in and talk in depth about that. And that is just where people who are just a little bit more advanced can create commands and put them into uh, batch files, these text files, and, and even schedule those to run so that they can just kind of run, you know, in the middle of the night when you're sleeping. So I just want to let you know that there's more than one way to build output. Uh, so there you go. Uh, just use whatever works for you. We're just going to go ahead and build this online uh, target once again in here. And we are going to check out the results. Uh, let's see here, move this over. I just want to see everything once it finishes. Make sure that we don't have any warnings that we need to deal with. And I don't think we will. No, we don't. And so, yeah, you just, and when you, when you view it, you can select, so you can double click this. That's what I've been doing up until now, double clicking that. That opens it up in my default browser, but you can also click this view output button and it gives you options. So I've got Firefox loaded. I've got, you know, Microsoft Edge. You can look at it in a tablet and, mo and smartphone, these little windows that open up. So that's kind of cool. And then if you make changes, we'll see if we make changes here and you quickly want to rebuild it, you're already down here in the window pane. I like to use that rebuild target. So if I make changes, then there it goes. All right, so let's open this up and check it out. Okay, so here is our new updated output and let's just take a look at it. The colors looks, look good, the logo. We got our hero image and the new text in here. Come down and welcome in San Diego, California. So that all got replaced, remember this. Uh, paragraph was conditioned so that it only shows for the combination course. So that's working correctly. Got our link down here. That's orange too. Everything looks good. Click that, go to the first page. So this is where we started replacing uh, the content for the Austin course and substituting, changing it so that it was for San Diego. And in this one, I added just a little bit of content and we got our uh, drop downs with the gibberish in there. So I didn't bother changing too much of that. You can see the e-learning toolbar, the look is changed. So the hover button is orange and the progress bar is orange and that all looks good. Go to the next one. So now we have our first knowledge check. We had reorganized that TOC file so that the first knowledge check came up sooner. Now, one of the things we did in that knowledge check was we changed this one to be optional uh, and the others are required. We didn't change that. Notice that this is grayed out, the next button. So you, because something on here is required, you cannot click it until that is uh, submitted, until that answer is submitted. So uh, again, all this is gibberish. So I'm clicking on this and of course I'm gonna get these wrong, but this remains grayed out because that was required and these are required. This is the last required one right here. And you come down, now it's enabled, even though I haven't uh, selected this one uh, because that one's optional, but I'm gonna go ahead and, and do this anyway. I got all of them wrong and come to the next page. This one, you know, just put in a little bit of text. If I were really doing this, I would absolutely, you know, put in a lot more content in these, but we just wanted to do this fast. Now we're at the second knowledge check. Again, this still has Austin stuff in it because I, I didn't bother to go through the process of changing it. And I want to make myself feel good to get one of these right. So there we go. And oops, this one right here. And even the, notice the color in the check boxes. Uh, is changed too. That's because we changed styles in our style sheet. So just by changing that style variable, it changed a lot of stuff. All right, and uh, come down to beer again. We got some more drop downs that we wanted to use, and the next one, San Diego Zoo. So yeah, I in real life I would have 
written about the San Diego Zoo and the image would have been the San Diego Zoo, but I just picked a, a madcap one. But so before we had uh, just a sample video and now it's the one that I put in there. So that worked great. Next, now we're down to our third knowledge check. This is the knowledge check, the new one that we added and got that one wrong too. Okay, next. Now we're down to the San Diego test. Everything looks good so far on this. And again, we still have the old content in here. I would have gone through and actually changed it. Now, one of the things that we did, um, no, I'm gonna go to the next one, next page. Notice, remember that we had selected an option to randomize answers. And so each time the, uh, the test, the course would be launched, these things would be in, in a different order. And the way you can test this is to just press, keep pressing F5 to refresh on your, um, on your computer. And you saw it there a little bit there. It's switching around as, as I press F5, all right? And that is two, and let's go to the next one. This is humid subtropical. And we're at question five. And this is a trick question. <clears throat> and then this is a new question that we added in here. I'm just going to get something wrong. And uh, <clears throat> the up until now, all the buttons had been pre uh, previous and next. But because this now, this new question that we added is the last one in the test, it, this button changes automatically to complete, which is really nice. And we're 15 through 15. We're at the end of the test. So we just click complete. And there is our score. <clears throat> now, the thing that we changed on this, we kept, this is the automated test results page that Flair had. The only thing we changed was the color. And oh, we also changed the name of the course. Remember, we did that uh, in the in the target on that e-learning tab. There was the name of the course where you can specify the uh, the LMS stuff, and we put that in there, and so that automatically filled in. So this is nice. So it uh, it gave us all of the stuff that we wanted in our results. So very cool. So that worked. Now let's go back to Flare. And let's test our uh, PDF and see if there's anything in there. The process is, you know, you, you generate the output and you're checking, I'm gonna right click and, and select the, that one this time. It added a new row at the bottom. You just, you go through, you know, everybody knows this. You gotta, re, you gotta review your stuff. And sometimes you miss things. Well, we got everything on the online. Let's see how we did with the, PDF course, if there's anything that needs to be changed. This PDF stuff is goofy sometimes. Let me just move this stuff out of the way. And I'm just gonna just kind of scroll through this. So our title page looks good with the colors, the logo, the name of the course, the teacher version. That's what I selected here was the teacher version. And the hero image at the bottom looks good. Let me get rid of that. That's better. And come down and there is our generated TOC that I was talking about. And we've got all of our new knowledge checks in there. Everything looks good. There's our first page. We conditioned out that uh, link that said start course because it didn't make sense to do that in a PDF. And again, the colors look good. And I will check out the footers. In this case, this particular PDF has footers. And so it has the name of whatever the, uh, it's, it's set up to use the first heading. <clears throat> so uh, this one is table of contents down there, or, or it might've been, it might've been, I might've put it in the, this one in the page loud itself, spelled out table of contents, but it's working here. And the welcome page, that one I think is using the first heading. So it says welcome down at the bottom. Uh, I'll increase the size of this a little bit just to make it easier to see, even though we can't see the whole, you know, two page spread now, but you can see welcome and we're right on our pages. 
So now you get into the content. All right, that looks good. The uh, This was a uh, drop down, so that automatically, um, it, it, it just kind of flattened it into just text. So it's not expand collapse. History, that's what we're on here, history. That looks good, The that. Uh, first knowledge check. And this is a teacher version, so we see the answers. And history, first knowledge check over on the right. Those are looking right. Now here, remember we put in our page break, one, two, three, and we didn't like that this one was straggling, so that works. So that put this entire question and answer section over here on that page. Now we come down here, music. Yep, we're right there. First knowledge check, second knowledge check. Looking good, beer on that side. Okay, so here's a problem. We have second knowledge check and you come down and it says table of contents. And this one is right, it says beer. So what happened here is this one is pointing to the wrong page layout in the TOC. I know that's what happened. So we're gonna I'll make a mental note of that and we'll go fix that. All right, coming down here, brewery, these became, these are like H2s in here. They're part of the beer section. That looks fine. San Diego Zoo. Remember, we conditioned out the actual video uh, because we wanted it to be an online output, but in print, it's just this. And we got our color for the link because we just we just changed our branding colors and, and it caught a whole bunch of stuff doing it that way. It didn't have to go in individually to a bunch of styles. These look good. Third knowledge check, San Diego to San Diego test. Now we're down to San Diego test. And these look good. And it all looks good, except, you know, I, of course, I would go in and fill in the content with San Diego test. So that one looked good. Uh, and chances are that our student version will look the same. It'll have the same issues as the other one. It'll have that same foot. Uh, footer issue because it's using the same TOC. But if I drag this thing in here and get rid of this and get rid of this, and you can see San Diego, it's the student version. So that variable has kicked in there and the rest should be the same as I scroll quickly through this, get down to that second knowledge check right there. Yep. Same problem. That really is our only problem in here. So let's go and check that out. So I'm going to go to my TOC. It's the print TOC that these things are using. <clears throat> the other thing I didn't really look at closely when I generated the student was whether the answers were provided, but I'll generate it again here in a minute when we do this fix uh, and make sure of that. So the second knowledge check. That's the one that was pointing to the wrong thing. So if I if I open the properties for one that's correct, like the music one, and I go to the printed output tab, this is a chapter break in here, and it is pointing to the chapters page layout, right? And that's what we want. Well, the second knowledge check, I'll bet you anything, it's pointing to the front matter one. Yep. So it's a chapter break, but somehow this was set wrong, all right? So, uh, with the resolution I have, I'm going to move that off the screen and click OK because I couldn't resize that. The other thing that I had forgotten to do when I when I was completing this print TOC is this third knowledge check should have a condition on it. This particular output is for the combination course, so it worked fine. But if I were to do use the same TOC for a uh, test only. PDF output, then that would be wrong. So I'm just going to go in here and set my condition on that. Click OK off screen. And so that is fine. So now let's go rebuild. I'm going to select down here my student one and rebuild it. And this time, let's check and see if that uh, footer is right. And let's see about those answers. They shouldn't be shown. And we go here. And once again, it's going to make me close these things. And I do it. And that's right. Okay. We come down. 
And yeah, sure enough, no correct answers are shown. So that's right. Come down to the second knowledge check. Now it's correct. And it will be on the other one as well, the other PDF. Okay, so that was the first part that we wanted to go over. Ways to build the output and then view it and see if we had to make changes and build it again and view it again. So now we're good with that. So now we're at the place where, and we're going to pretend that I actually went in and filled the thing with a bunch of San Diego content, which I didn't, but we're going to pretend now that, all right, you got that done. You want to put it in the hands of your end users. Let's talk about that in the next section. So the last thing, so we built it, we viewed it. The last thing we want to talk about is publishing. So let's hop back into Flare and discuss that for a little bit. All right. So not everybody has the same setup in their company or the same needs. And really, you just got to get access to your output files and put them in a place where your people can get to them and you point them to it. So in the case, uh, the, the easiest way to do this, <laughs> not, I'm not saying it's the best, but the easiest way is I generated uh, the online course, for example, down here. That's the last one that I did that was good. Uh, the, the thing that I would do, the, or, the, or the thing that you can do that's super easy is click open output folder. And that I'm, I'll have to drag it over from the other screen. Uh, that will take you to the location in the output where that out, where those files are. And you can see it's a bunch of folders and files. And you just got to put this someplace where people can get to it. And then because this is HTML5 output, and we didn't specify the output file name, it's using default.htm. This is the file you point them to. That's the entry file. They, they open that and it's gonna take them to the first page of your course. Now, if you had specified uh, a particular file name, it would be this instead. And that's where you would take them. Okay, so how do you get that for your, up there for your users? Well, it, I mean, it, it's different for every company. Some people have, uh, you know, a certain uh, methodology that they use to get their output up on a server or wherever for people. Now, Flare does have uh, something that you can use if you want to automate this, and that's called these destination files. And I'm not going to go through this in detail. You can read about it in the online help. And we have another video called Building and Publishing Output, uh, where I believe I talk about that. And so the destination file it seems mysterious to people, but it's not at all. It, uh, it's simply this file where you are pointing to a place and you're associating this destination file with a target. And you do that in the publishing um, tab in the target editor, but I haven't added a publishing destination. If I had, it would be in here and I would select it. And so you can point to uh, different, um, places. You can use uh, an FTP or an SFTP destination and point it so that the what it does is it'll just basically copy all of your output files and folders and put them wherever you tell it to up on a server somewhere. There are other destination files for uh, Salesforce ServiceNow and Zendesk, but you wouldn't use that for this because those particular outputs, the, cor the course isn't going to really you know, the, all, of, all of the stuff wouldn't be there. The only outputs that are output that is um, supported for all three of those is clean XHTML. So you wouldn't do that, but you could publish it. I talked about Madcap Central before. You could publish it up to Madcap Central. And the cool thing about Madcap Central is that's a good solution for people who maybe they're a small shop and, and they're thinking, you know, we, we really don't even have an IT person. And I don't know, I don't know how to get this up on a, I don't understand how to get it up on a server. Don't know the first thing. We don't really have the resources. Well, that's one reason why Central exists so that you can uh, build your output up there and then you can host it there. And it's actually, it's so easy, so easy to do. It's just a few, you know, clicks really. And then it makes it live and you direct your uh, audience to that. 
those are some of the possibilities for publishing your output. You just have to decide in, you know, in your company, in your department, what, what do you want to do? But at least you know how to get to the output files. All right. That is going to wrap up this video. In the next video, the last video, we are going to take a look at integrating your online course with an external LMS, learning management system.